Welcome back to Flying Dirty, the channel for the entrepreneurs and aviation fanatics. On this episode, you're about to see me dealing with weather diversions, including a funnel cloud that we spotted from the air as we approach Meridian. And at the end of the video, I am also going to be talking about why Meridian Airport has become my go-to stop every time I go to Florida. And a big thank you to Scott at Meridian Airport for taking some spectacular photos of 3620 Whiskey. I will share those photos with you at the end of the video. I also wanted to give a special thanks to all of my subscribers. In less than a year, we have over 4,000 subscribers. To celebrate this achievement, I will be giving out a 20% discount on all of the merchandise at www.flydirty.com. Thank you because the Flying Dirty purchases really help this channel thrive. So join me and welcome on board. Welcome to Flying Dirty. I'm Raul, private pilot and entrepreneur based out of Centennial, Colorado. Come on board with me, my family and friends on our flight adventures across the nation. All right guys, so welcome back to Flying Dirty. So we stopped at Tulsa on the last episode. Now we, uh, we took off and now we're heading over to Meridian. Now, interesting things have developed ever since. We talked a little bit about the storms on the last video, so if you haven't seen that, go check it out and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. But uh, let me show you the original flight plan on the iPad that I had. All right, there we go. So that's our iPad there. So originally, this was our, uh, our flight plan from Tulsa to Magi and then to Meridian. And as you can see, we would have been going on this direct course towards Meridian at this point. Now, we decided to deviate, and instead of going direct to Meridian from Magi, we decided to go to Magi. Then we decided to go south-southeast to Texarkana. And you can see the reason why right here. Because we've had a, a lot of storms, and those storms, they were, they were not going they were anywhere. anywhere. They were not moving. So uh, I didn't want to really risk it and go through those storms. I can actually see some of the buildups as we speak on my left-hand side. I can see some of the buildups. But anyway, I didn't want to go through that. That would have been a little too risky. So we decided to, instead of doing this route here on the iPad, we decided to go this route to Texarkana and then from Texarkana direct to Magi and you can see why is because we're going to go right in between storms okay so scatter storms are easy to avoid but when you're dealing with this convective activity which is widespread you don't want to go through that well at least I don't I don't even want to deal with it you know there's always a chance that it's okay if you go through it and you go underneath it's, it's always a chance that you might go through it okay but I don't want to take that chance, especially look at this. There's a lot of lightning strikes that you can see. There's a lot of lightning strikes, and I don't want to be nowhere near that Report lightning. Here with the Roger and change advisory approved. So I think we made the right decision. Right now, Meridian is showing uh, storms around the area, so we also have to, you know, be uh, cautious of that. But uh, we have airports that we can also land if need be. Or we can just hold, uh, we got plenty of fuel so we could hold or do something until uh, the storm passes through. But that's what we decided to do. And I think we did the right choice. What do you think, Javier? Yeah, I'd, I'd rather not go through that. That's right. That's a quick ticket to see uh, Jesus one way. Let's go back to our current flight plan. All right, so here it is. So this is what we decided to do instead. From Tulsa to Magi, and then from Magi to Texarkana, and then from Texarkana direct. That is much, much better for us. It'll keep us out of the danger. So there it is. Uh, that's what we decided to do. Uh, a lot of times, whenever you're flying, that's one of the great things about general aviation is that you are in control. You, you basically go where you want to go and uh, you plan however you want to plan. 3620 Whiskey, contact raise the back approach, 120.9er. 120.9er, 3620 Whiskey, have a great day, sir. Good. 
Good afternoon, Razorback Approach. Cherokee 3620 Whiskey, 7000. Cherokee 3620 Whiskey, Razorback Approach. We're sent altimeter 2992. 2992, 3620 Whiskey. Okay, so there's another thing that I want to talk about. So I do a lot of IFR flying. Even today, I could do VFR, but I prefer not to. I, I, I love flying IFR. So it keeps me more proficient, I believe, uh, fl fl flying IFR. Not only that, I also have another set of eyes. So whenever I do these long cross-country flights, I uh, generally, I would say 99 times out of, out of 100, I would file IFR. Flying IFR, you, you don't have the lead way that you would flying VFR. Like if you were flying VFR, if I wanted to right now, I could just make 360s, and that's okay. But flying instrument, when they give you a heading, you fly that heading. When they tell you to fly your flight plan, you fly your flight plan. Now, to that end, we were making plans to do the flight plan that I had shown you, and when we landed at Tulsa, you know, we seen it coming, and there is no way that I wanted to risk going through those storms, so we had to divert, we had to make different plans. You know, and it only added 15 minutes to the flight, so, 15 minutes for safety, I'll take that all day long. What about you, son? Yeah. Absolutely. So this is Javier. Pretty sure you guys have met him already on previ previous videos. But Javier is learning how to steer the airplane. Uh, today I'm not going to really let him do much with the airplane because this is uh, an IFR flight. And uh, he doesn't have much practice. So... I'm not going to let him really do anything. What I am letting him do, however, is mess around with the radios. So what do you do, son? If I say uh, November 3620 Whiskey, uh, change to frequency 121.8. Click here, and then you go 1218, and then you press enter, and then... And then there it is. It's going to change once you press enter. It changes there. So good job, Javier. So he's helping me with the frequencies. And, uh, and that's pretty much about it for right now. But I am eager to teach him how to fly uh, when we get to uh, Denver and when we have more time and, and we can practice VFR. Then I'll let him uh, take over the controls for a little bit. So again, on these flights, uh, we've got, uh, we got a couple of things that we're going to do. First, uh, we're going to Meridian. I like going to Meridian. Why do we go to Meridian, son? They have really good ice cream. They have the best ice cream, I tell you. So we're spoiled. So we get ice cream. They also have waffles in the morning. So, you know, we wake up early in the morning and we make our waffles and then we go on to uh, our, you know, final destination, which would be Florida. So this is really my route. I go to Tulsa from Denver, then from Tulsa to Meridian, then from Meridian to Flagler. That's my uh, that's that's mainly my route whenever I go to Florida to visit my uh, parents. Now I'm gonna visit my parents, and of course we have a delivery of burritos that we're going to be delivering from them from our restaurant Habanero's Mexican Grill. So again, if you are in Denver, if you land at Centennial or anywhere around Denver, come check us out at Habanero's Mexican Grill. That is 5584 South Parker Road in uh, Aurora, Colorado. We're basically about uh, five miles from uh, Centennial. So uh, come and get a $100 burrito. So after we go to Florida to visit my parents, then we're going to uh, go to Georgia, uh, Augusta, Georgia, to visit a guy that uh, I follow on YouTube who has a print shop. So, you know, for me, it's pretty cool. I I'm an entrepreneur and I like to learn a lot of stuff. So. For example, for the restaurant, I do my own graphics, I do my own marketing, and John Hickenlooper, when he came by the restaurant, he was very impressed because he knew that uh, I did my own printing and my own marketing, and uh, he thought that that was uh, very... Uh, impressive? Impressive, son. So here we are, guys. Uh, we, we, I think we did a really good job. We're vectoring around the uh, build-ups right now. So if you can see, we have a build-up in front of us right now which Javier is showing you, and 
and uh, we could go right through those clouds if we wanted to. We are IFR, but the problem with those clouds is cumulus clouds are very, very bumpy, and there is no sense in really making the ride uncomfortable. And you never know what kind of turbulence you're going to find inside those clouds. So I don't take chances. I don't go in those clouds at all. So whenever I see the buildups, I just basically avoid them, and uh, and I ask for deviations. And in weather like this, where you have a lot of pop-up thunderstorms, ATC will always let you uh, deviate left or right, of course. So you'll see that we're going to get really, really close to those clouds. Those are not severe clouds or anything of that nature, so I don't mind being a little close to them, but I just don't want to go through them. So as you can see from looking at this radar, this is the reason, again, that we didn't want to go through these clouds. I mean, look at this. Some of those are purple now with a lot of lightning. I don't want to be near that. So I'm glad we made the right choice. You know, it's always better to just play it safe as opposed to going through that. And, you know, that's just too much. So there's the cloud there. I don't want to go through that. On 2-1, we're trying to maintain 2,000. Advise the 16 Air Force site. One. We'll advise her it's sending uh, out, of, out of 16 for 2,000 this time. The 3 Echo Echo Center, 12672. And again, we could technically fly right through these clouds, yeah, but again, uh, I don't want to because it's going to be uncomfortable. But look at that buildup right there. That's a pretty that's a pretty big one, and that's the one that shows red. See right there next to the airplane, that red one. That's it right there. Two zero whiskey fly heading of uh, one one seven zero now one seventy for about five more miles. Okay, one seven zero three six two zero whiskey. Two zero whiskey is now clear direct meridian. Clear, clear direct meridian three six two zero whiskey. Thank you for your help, sir. So let's go back to meridian and let's put it on GPS mode. So he's going to put us right in between these cells here, and uh, we'll see how that goes. If uh, Once I get closer, if I don't like it, then uh, we can always divert. Again, uh, we're, playing it, uh, we're playing it here by ear. We have a couple of alternates already picked out in case we can't make it for some reason. But we're going to keep a visual. That's, that's the most important thing is keep a visual. So that way you know what you're doing with, with a certainty. Uh, I don't really like to depend on these radars much. I mean, what you see may not be what you get. And that could be either or. It could show good weather, but it could actually be worse than it shows. But it could be bad, and it could be better than what it shows. So bottom line is I need to see it visually. I need to depict it visually and make a decision with a visual decision. All right, so here's what we're doing. So we have visual. We're going to remain visual from these clouds. Uh, ATC is giving us uh, some vectors so that we can make it to Meridian. It actually doesn't look that bad. It's, uh, it's a little dark, but the clouds are high. We did ask to get below the deck. I just didn't want to punch through those clouds. That's, that's what I wanted to avoid. But as long as I have visual and as long as the air remains smooth, then I'm okay. Uh, but we, like I said, we do have uh, two airports that we picked here, but and it also looks like the weather is moving away from Meridian, which is a good thing. So we we're kind of like squeezing in between uh, two cells. And ATC has been very helpful. So uh, like I said, they're vectoring us and they're giving us a visual for runway two two. So let's go ahead and set this here. We're gonna go ahead and do a visual R nav. We'll do a uh, 2-2. Two, two. We'll just go ahead and set it as a vector. Citation 5 Juliet, Sierra, turn right, direct Yarbo. Direct Yarbo, 5 Juliet, Sierra. Approaching altitude. And we're approaching our assigned altitude, and we are way below the clouds. Oh, and they did a fabulous job. They vectored us around the precipitation. That is fantastic. So you see that big wall of clouds right there, that big wall there? That's the rain. That's what we didn't want to go through. So they're doing a really good job. They're putting us right in between uh, the cells. 
Cherokee 20 Whiskey, turn left heading 085, sectors to avoid area of precipitation off your 1 to 2 o'clock, 20 miles in diameter, moderate to heavy intensity. Copy that, uh, 085, and we do have that precipitation in sight. 20 Whiskey, thank you. Wow. Yeah, the thing is with uh, with the precipitation with the <laughs> with the precipitation as it comes down, it takes all that energy with it, all that cold energy and all the wind. So a lot of times you can have a lot of wind shear and downdrafts with that wind coming down. That's why it's really not a good idea to go through that. But right now uh, they're doing a really really good job. And they're going to give us uh, vectors to runway 22. Cherokee 20 Whiskey, turn left heading 075. 075, 3620 Whiskey. Whiskey, turn right, heading 110. Right, 110, 3620 Whiskey. And for Cherokee 20 Whiskey, there seems to be an opening in the cell to uh, the southwest of the field. It should get you there around six miles uh, in the clear. Copy that, I'm detecting the same thing. Thank you very much for your help, 3620 Whiskey. All right, son, let's look for the airport. Whiskey has a field in sight. Cherokee 20 Whiskey cleared visual approach runway 22, contact Key Tower 133.97. Have a good night. 133.57, clear for the visual. Uh, 22, 3620 Whiskey, thank you, sir. Good afternoon, uh, Key Tower, Cherokee 3620 Whiskey for the visual 22. Cherokee 3620 Whiskey, Key Tower, report a right base from way 22. Right base for runway 
Cherokee 20 Whiskey, turn left to Bravo 3, then contact ground 121.100. Bravo 3, then ground 3620 Whiskey. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, uh, Key Ground, Cherokee 3620 Whiskey, off of the runway at uh, Bravo 3, going to the IFBO. November 3620 Whiskey, Key Ground, Texas FBO via Bravo. FBO, Bravo 3620 Whiskey. We made it, guys. Put this on a VFR. How's it going? How you doing? What can we do for you today? Doing great. Uh, so uh, I'm going to be uh, getting the car and then I'll stay at the Holiday Inn. Are you are spending the night? Yeah, I might as well. I'm I'm tired. And uh, and we're going to top them all off, all okay. four tanks. And uh, you want to stick her in the hangar? Put her in the hangar. Keep her nice and uh, clean, you know. And... Yes. What, what's the flying dirty sticker? Oh, man. So that's uh, it's a YouTube channel that I have. Oh, really? Yeah. And. Uh, yeah, I've had it now for about a year, and man, we're, we're doing pretty good, man. I'm gonna have to look you up. Check it, check it out, <laughs> definitely check it out. You mind if I taste the photos of the plane? No, absolutely not, man. Help I yourself. Know. All right, kudos to the awesome service here at Meridian. You know, I've talked about this airport before, but this is one of my favorite stops. It's Meridian, and I'm gonna show you why. It's because of the uh, ice cream. The kids love the ice cream, and then this is the kind of service you get here. You know, as you can see, they take care of you. I don't need a, I don't need a rental car. This is an uh, airport Meridian Aviation car, which is a, uh, it is a pilot courtesy vehicle. So this pilot courtesy vehicle, they loan it to us for, so, so they loan it to us so we can stay uh, for overnight stay. And as you can see, they pull it right up to the uh, airplane. We load our bags and then we go. So. Meridian has superior service and this is one of the reasons I love coming here. All right, here we are. I bet they're already, look at that. Already getting hot dogs. This is why they love coming here. The lemonade's good too. So lemonade, we've got ice cream, popcorn, hot dogs. You can also do nachos. And in the morning they have waffles. And then look at this. She's making her uh, hot dog buns. Um, that's the hot dog. Are you gonna make a chili dog? So since we discovered Meridian Airport about five or six years ago, it has become our favorite stop whenever we go to Florida, and I highly recommend it. Now Scott had asked me if he could take pictures of the airplane, but I had no idea that they would turn out to be so amazing. So check out the pictures, and we'll see you on the next episode whenever we go from Meridian to Flagler, Florida. Take care, stay safe, and have a great day, my friends.